Let's look at an example of the moment about a point. Moments about a point. And in this particular example, what we're going to have is we're going to have, let's say that we have a wall over here. And we have what's called a hinge. And we have some type of a beam connected on that hinge. And uh, we have a cable that connects somewhere like this. Okay, so that's the cable. And I'm gonna name this is A. And here in the beam, uh, we have over here point B. And we have over here point C. And, and again, this is a beam. So let's say that this is, um, it can be in uh, a place to have a small roof that people can walk underneath and sometimes they have cables to support them. So something along those lines. And somewhere in here, in, at C, we're gonna have a force. Uh, that force is in this direction. Uh, we know that this is 60 degrees. And the magnitude of this force is 100 pounds. So this magnitude of this force is 100 pounds. All right, so that's what we know about the problem. And what we're asked to do is to calculate the moment that this force produce about A, okay? So calculate the moment of the force about A. Ah. I'm gonna solve this in two different ways. First, I'm going to do my vector analysis. And for this vector analysis, the equation that I'm going to be using is that my moment is going to be equal to R cross F. And that R is a position vector that describes the position of the force relative to the point of interest. And this F, of course, is the, the, the force in Cartesian vector form. Uh, and then later on, I'm going to do the analysis using uh, um, scalar analysis. And we're going to see when I compare the results at the end, which should obtain exactly the same answer. All right, very good. So the first thing I need to do is to define my R, OK? Define my R. And if I go back here to my drawing, what I need to do is define the position of anywhere of this line of action, right? Anywhere on this line of action, the line of action of the force, anywhere, um, any point here relative to A, right? So the, the, the point that I know is C. Oh, by the way, I forgot the distances. Uh, this distance is three feet and this distance is two feet. Okay. So I know C relative to A, so my vector R can be this vector over here, right? And this is R A C, from A to C, right? Or C relative to A. I'm going to put my axis. I'm going to have my x-axis going in this direction or my y-axis going in this direction. So now I can actually write that vector RAC in Cartesian vector form. All right, so we see that it is 5 feet in the positive x direction. So we can say that R is 5i Feet. Very good. 
Next, I need to write my fours, right? These fours, write it in Cartesian vector form. We have this angle over here. So based on the magnitude and the angle, I can say that my force vector is going to be equal to 100 pounds sine of 60 i minus 100 cosine of 60 j and this is in pounds all right let's look again so sine of 60 we have this angle over here the sine will be the opposite so that's in the x direction cosine will be in the negative y right along the negative y axis so we have the negative 100 cosine of 60j and that's in pounds all right very good um so then my moment my vector of moment is the determinant of i j k first my r i have five zero zero and then my f and i did those calculations so this 100 sine of 60 will be 86.60 um, this 100 cosine of 60 is uh, minus 50.0 and then zero over here that's my determinant and when we do this calculation since this is in 2d since this is in 2d the only thing that I need to worry about is what's happening along the uh, along the z-axis. So I don't have to worry about the first two brackets that I wrote in the previous video to do these calculations. I only need to worry about k, right? So I can say that this is going to be equal to 0i, 0j, right? Those two should give me 0 based on the definition of the cross product. And then we have plus... And we have 5 times minus 50 minus 0 times 86.6 K. Okay. And when we do those calculations, it's going to give me a negative value. So my M is going to have to be equal to minus 250 K. And my units are going to be pounds times foot, right? All right. Notice something, I, had, I, I didn't have to do anything with the right-hand rule to be able to find this negative 250K. This negative came straight from the calculations. As we're gonna see, when we try to do this using the scalar version of the calculations, we do have to think about the uh, about the right-hand rule and define whether or not this is positive or negative. All right, let's do let's do the um, the second part, which is the uh, scalar analysis. And here, my next page. And for this, I'm going to redraw the positions of some of these uh, things. So I have A, I have um, B and C. The important part is going to be this A, this C, and the four. So I'm going to redraw this part in the next page, okay? All right, so I have, change color here. I have, um, a is somewhere over here. And then we have C somewhere over here. And the distance for that was five feet, total distance. Okay, now here's the trick that I'm going to use. I have this force of 100 pounds, right? 100 pounds force. And that 100 pound force is going in this direction. What I'm going to do, 
is I'm going to replace this. I'm going to decompose this force into two forces, one in the x direction, another one in the y direction. And by doing that, I'm going to help my calculations. So and instead of writing this 100 pound force, what I'm going to do is use, use this and this. So let me let me explain that in the in the next uh, in the next uh, diagram. Okay, so I'm going to have this diagram. I'm going to have a force going in this direction. And I call this fx. And I'm going to have a force going in this direction. It's going to be fy. Okay. Now, what is fx equal to? fx is equal to well, we can use the same um, it, the same equation that I used to find it in Cartesian vector form, right? So this is 100 sine of 60. Which gives me 86.60 pounds. And this will be 100 cosine of 60, which gives me um, this... Um, See, what was it? 50, right? Yeah, 50 pounds. All right, notice I'm not using the negative because this, this sign here is telling me which direction is going, okay? So all I'm going to do is to put my axis, x-axis, y-axis, and now I'm ready to solve this using my scalar analysis. All right, for my scalar analysis, what I can do is add the moments for both forces, right? Now, for this, this FX force, right, this FX force over here, we need to multiply the force times the perpendicular distance. But the thing is, the force goes through, right, if I, if I know the line of action, if that's the line of action, it goes through A. So this FX does not... Uh, produce any moments about A, because it goes through that point. So I don't have to worry about this force Fx. And the only force that I need to worry about is this Fy, right? This is the line of action. This is 90 degrees here. So this five feet is gonna be the perpendicular distance. So this M is gonna be equal to Fd, and that force, we said that it was 50 times d, which is 5, that's the distance. But now I need to define my sign. Is that going to be positive or is it going to be negative? And for that, I need to use my right-hand rule. So it, this is going to make this rotate um, uh, it, uh, clockwise. And by making it rotate clockwise, it's going to be a negative moment, right? So that is going to be minus 250 pounds foot. So here is, here is, this is, these are the calculations when you do the analysis a scalar way. It's a little bit more thinking about what happening with those forces. It's a little bit more thinking about what happened with this sign, right? Because this sign is defined by the right hand rule. In, uh, but the calculations are relatively simple, right? When you do the vector analysis, well, the vector analysis has this uh, 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 determinant, so it, it might look a little bit more scary, uh, but the advantage is I don't have to think about this right-hand rule. That negative sign comes straight from the calculation. So eventually what you're going to find is uh, you're going to start getting used to that right-hand rule, and you might actually tend to do uh, this uh, uh, scalar analysis uh, and that's why you might find in other classes that the scalar analysis is a little bit more popular than the vector analysis.